fun. I'm Missy, and the book that I reviewed was I Won't Learn From You by Herbert Cole. It's a collection of essays that he wrote about his life experiences and his experiences teaching, where he ran into the phenomenon of not learning. Um, I wanted to read this book because I know that when I start teaching, I'm going to be teaching economics and accounting and yucky classes, so I'm going to have a lot of kids not wanting to learn these things. <laughs> But another reason I wanted to learn was my experiences with my own kids. I spent several years homeschooling them, and we had a lot of not learning moments there, too. <laughs> At the time, one of the ways that I combated this was by not teaching. Um, <laughs> I was a big fan of John Holt, and Holt was an educator who became disenchanted with the public school system. Between the 60s and 80s, he wrote a lot of books on how kids learn and how schools don't teach the way that kids learn. Schools teach in assembly line fashion. Not because it's in the best interest of kids, but because it's the easiest way to run an organization. Um, Holt believed that learning shouldn't be about cramming just tons of knowledge into your head. And there's no way to even know what future knowledge you're going to need. So instead of going to a school every day and being taught how to be taught, it's better to learn how to learn. That way, anything you need to know in the future, you're going to be able to learn it. Herbert Cole was also an educator and an author who had some really similar ideas about how learning happens. Cole grew up in the 1940s in New York in a Jewish ghetto. And um, for the most part, he was just your typical kid. He enjoyed going to school, but he was young, and one of the reasons is he had a teacher that was from the same Jewish neighborhood that he was from, and she was able to really connect to her students because of this. Um, he really enjoyed school, but as he got older, he kind of got bored with school, too. And he decided at one point somewhere around junior high, that he wanted to be a gangster, because <laughs> gangsters are cool. And then he met a real gangster, and he decided that was nowhere near as fun as he thought it was going to be. Um, then he started hanging out in toy stores, bookstores, department stores, and his friends taught him how to steal postage stamps, and he became a part of this um, comic book theft ring. <laughs> But while he was in there, he watched these people that would give demonstrations of how to use products in the stores. And he realized that for the first time, he was seeing real teachers, and these were real places of knowledge. He realized that learning isn't something that just happens in school. It happens outside of school just as often. And he realized that he was able to take charge of his own education. Um, Cole eventually ended up going to Harvard, and while he was at Harvard, this was the first time that he realized that the rest of the world wasn't Jewish, too. Um, this was when, this was when he realized that he had done a lot of not learning himself, and it was catching up with him. Um, as a kid, growing up in a Jewish neighborhood, he was expected to learn Yiddish, but he refused to learn it. And his parents sent him to Hebrew school so that he could learn Hebrew, but he refused to learn that too because he thought that was stupid to learn it just for his four months. So he didn't learn it. And when he got to Harvard, at that time it was predominantly white male, and he didn't fit in socially. He found a student union for Jewish students, but they kept themselves very secluded so that they could pretend they were back in their neighborhood and it was comfortable. Cole didn't want to be one extreme or the other. He wanted to just be himself. But in order to do that, he needed to connect to his roots. Only he couldn't because he had cheated himself out of that experience by not learning about who he was and where he came from. Oops. Of course, I get the um, Not learning, or also known as creative, Creative maladjustment is a healthy but dysfunctional way to protect yourself. Um, it can be used for good reasons. It kind of helps you figure out who you are as an individual. One example would be if, uh, if you're a Christian, you might need to not learn how to be prideful. 
but it's also used to protect yourself from failure, from racism, from gender bias, from things that you find offensive, but you have to be there learning anyhow. One example that he gives in his book is a Texas history class that he goes to. And the teacher gets up and starts reading a passage that says Texas was settled by New Englanders. Well, the class has a large Hispanic population, and he hears some students sitting in the back of the class, they start snickering and talking, and the teacher says, what's your problem? And one of the students says, what are we, animals? And the teacher says, well, what does that have to do with anything? Then he gets mad, shuts the book, and stomps out of the class. Cole gets up, reads the passage again to the students, and says, what's in here is lies. It's racist, and you have been done a great injustice. And this gets the students' attention, because finally somebody understands where they're coming from. Um, Cole says that conscious will refusal of schooling for political or cultural reasons is not acknowledged as an appropriate response to oppressive education. But not learning is the only resource that students have. Mm -hmm. There's no way for them to actively rebel against things they don't want to learn. As a business and technology teacher, a lot of my classes are going to be elective. And hopefully my students are going to be there because they want to learn what I have to teach them. And, you know, then again, maybe not. They may just not want to learn from me. Who knows? But hopefully they will. And then again, I may have students from all sorts of socioeconomic backgrounds where maybe they don't have computers or access to any kind of technology at home. And they may feel intimidated sitting next to a student that has iPhones and tablets. And so the idea of being in a computer class and competing with these kids you know, may set them up for failure. So you have to be sensitive to what may be happening with your students. And remember that just because they're resistant to learning doesn't mean that they're failing. Um, resistance for Herbert Cole actually led to a lifetime of learning for him. Mm -hmm. uh, his, one of his first instances of not learning happened when he was supposed to be in the library learning about the Dewey Decimal System in school. He found a book called The Tattooed Man and it caught his attention and he says to this day he still refuses to learn about the Dewey Decimal System. <laughs> and without his, you know, pitching that little bit of rebellion there, I wouldn't be standing here talking about this today. Mm -hmm. My favorite story in this book that he tells is about the hope monger. In his Jewish neighborhood, there was a peddler that sold, that bought rags and sold them. And his, he had his rags in this little bundle over his shoulder like a hobo. And he would walk around the neighborhood saying, I buy all the clothes. Well, all the kids were afraid of him. Nobody wanted to talk to him, but they all kind of wanted to touch him at the same time. You know, it's sort of a game. <laughs> And Cole decided he was going to have a conversation with him one day, but he never did. He ended up having an imaginary conversation instead, where he goes up to the man and says, what are you selling? And the man says, hope. I sell hope. And so then Cole has this fantasy of being able to send hobo teachers all over the U.S., mm -hmm. and they're teaching kids to read, and they're giving them hope. And hope is really important for kids, because having hope helps them to construct a positive, sound future. So, to paraphrase Dr. Who, <laughs> we need to be that for kids as future teachers. We need to be an optimist, a hoper of far-flung hopes. We need to go out and sell hope to our students.